This is an excerpt from a recent Power Up webinar illustrating the latest features in Adobe's media applications. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this short video tutorial, I'll show you how to verify the quality of your audio media and how to repair problems with DC offset using Adobe Audition. There's two older features that you really need to pay attention to and I want to talk about for just a second. When I'm done with a mix and I've, I've mixed it, I've exported it, it's a WAV file, it's ready to go back into Premiere, it's what I think is perfect. I always, always open it up, move to the waveform editor where I see the single clip, go up to the window menu and select amplitude statistics. This displays a window which will then analyze my clip when I click scan. It goes through and it says the loudest the clip is is just a shade below zero. That's good. I don't want it at zero or above. How many clip samples are there? As long as that number is zero, you don't have distortion. If that number is any number greater than zero, the samples exceed zero dB on export. They're going to sound distorted. Your audio is going to get rejected if they run it through Q&A, which social media doesn't, but broadcast, cable, digital cinema do. You always, always want clip samples to be zero. Down here, this is a measure of the average loudness of my sound. If I'm mixing for broadcast, I'll want this at negative 24. If I'm mixing for the web, which is where all of my work is going right now, I mix this to negative 16. Negative 16 gives me a nice, strong signal, perfect for the web, and yet enough dynamic range that the voice is interesting to listen to. But here's the one that drove me nuts, DC offset. Most of today's mics are condenser mics. This means that we need to feed 48 volt phantom power to the mic in order for it to pick up sound and bring it back to the preamp. This 48 volts is a DC current and sometimes the electronics are such that that DC current doesn't get fully removed from the signal and the DC offset is a number other than zero. In my case it was either .02 or 0 0.03. The problem with DC offset being non-zero is it tends to put a click or a pop at the edit point to compensate for the difference in DC offset. And it drove me nuts. I couldn't figure out how to get rid of it. Just this week, as I was rehearsing this show, I learned that if your DC offset is any number other than zero, go up to the favorites menu and say repair DC offset. This apparently repairs it across my whole system because I haven't had any DC offset problems since. This dials out that hardware-based DC offset and I think it's just really cool. And before we wrapped up today, it's not a new feature, but it's one that I didn't know how it worked until this week and I wanted to share it with you. This was an excerpt from a recent Power Up webinar illustrating the latest features in Adobe's media applications. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 309. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.